What's up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, let's talk about something that is, I think, because when it's brought up, like Freddy, when I talk, when I tell Freddy how bad the Marvels uh, it is, he's like, "Oh, you just don't like female-led super," and it's not the case. My wife tells me the same thing, and it's not the case because I actually enjoy Black Widow somewhat. Yeah. I was hoping they would have done that released that movie before Endgame or one of those movies. Uh, I liked Wonder Woman. Third act was kind of ho- horrible and the, and the second one was uh, atrocious. Yeah. But by and there, you're going to probably go down a list of, of, of movies that have failed to deliver with female-led um, uh, characters. Let's let's get into it. So, I mean, so I think I have high hopes for Supergirl based on what James Gunn is basing the story on, based on the people involved in creating this uh, to bring it to 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 uh, the theaters, Brian. So I'm excited for this Supergirl, and so, uh, but based on the track record, you would bet against it. Your thoughts? Yeah, this is really a Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow discussion in part because the buzz from inside Warners is very positive. So David Zaslav on the most recent earnings call called this project out as something that has a great script and that obviously we know Millie Alcock recently won the role of of Kara and James Gunn has really hyped up the script um, by a relative newcomer in Anna Nagira. Not a lot of credits to her to her writing, but you know, Gunn obviously is saying he thinks he's seen the script and he thinks it's awesome. So, and you've got obviously Tom King shepherding his own comic being adapted into this story. And, you know, when we talked about it previously, I, I you know, I kind of made the point and I think you agreed, which was it felt like there was a lane here for this idea of a female led superhero film to be a hit because the state of that world wasn't so great. And that was even before we saw the abomination that was Madam Web, which attempted to basically put four quasi-female superheroes in it without them, without any of them actually being superheroes. Anyway, but the failure of Madam Web, which, you know, I sent you, and it, I mean, this is a movie that made $5 million in its second weekend. Five. Like, get that five million. Let me get that five million. Like this movie is disappearing. I mean, this movie is disappearing faster than you know Sue Storm and you know in a hurry. And it's like it's disappearing faster than Greece too. <laughs> <laughs> but it got me thinking because we had just come off the Marvels, which whatever anyone thinks of it was a massive commercial failure, making just under two hundred million dollars worldwide. And again, a movie that. You know, was a team up movie with female superheroes, right? In in, in Brie Larson, Tayona Paris, and uh, Kamala Khan. So, and Iman Vellani. So that kind of got me thinking, like, wait, wait a second here. And, and how tough of a mountain is Supergirl: Woman of Tomorrow trying to climb when it comes to being a big hit, critically and commercially, as a female driven female led because this is supergirl with another female companion and crypto the dog on a quest that's what this is this is not a superman movie in disguise this is carried by two female characters so obviously wonder woman is the one that comes to mind as the huge smashing success no doubt 820 million worldwide over 400 million domestic um, rotten tomato scores right around 90 percent unilaterally acclaimed it's funny, I watched this movie again start to finish recently. I don't think it's aging awesome. I gotta be honest with you. Which one, the first one? Wonder Woman 1. I, I, I hear you, start, I hear I, you. I watched it again start to finish and I was like, this is a little bit harder to get through than I remember. And I remember really liking it in the theater at the time. Um, but it is a huge success. However, let me run down this list for you. Now, there's one other success statistically but i don't count it i give an asterisk and that's captain marvel so captain marvel statistically is the most successful 1.1 billion but i submit that is 
Asterisk. A lot of that is the end game momentum, the momentum into end game. I, I just think of if, course. You, if you flip to your point, I think if you switch Black Widow and Captain Marvel in the timeline, Black Widow would have made a billion dollars. Hell's yeah, you could have pulled Howard the Duck in that joint, yo, and, and that would have made a billion. Less than half of what it did probably yeah. in 2021. Yeah. That's my thesis. For sure. So I kind of don't count that, even though it technically is a success. So then you're left with, here's what I got. This goes way back. So Wonder Woman 84, nope, that's not a success. <laughs> I mean, you can talk about the day and date all you want. It's not a good movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not yeah, a good yeah, movie. Not yeah. terrible, that, but it's not a good movie. It was doomed to fail. It was doomed to fail. The, here's the proof. Where's Wonder Woman 3? It <laughs> didn't happen. That's that's the nobody movie. wanted it. It was like, get proof. out of it. <laughs> so, that's not successful. We just talked about the Marvels. We just talked about Madam Wed. So there's three failures right there. Birds of Prey, critically acclaimed, commercially failed. Wasn't even close to profitable. Wasn't even close. Even with Margot Robbie as still as the headliner as Harley Quinn. Wasn't close. So that's a failure. Now you're getting into Electra, ah, Woman, Tank Girl. Tank Girl, original Supergirl back in the day, which was horrible coming <laughs> drafting off of Christopher Reeve Superman. So, and then you kind of have, so then I, there's sort of, there's, and then look, I don't know where to put Batgirl, but it never happened. Batgirl's a failure because it was deemed so bad by the, by the same studio that was touting, you know, Flash and Black Adam, and we know how those turned out. This studio wouldn't even release Batgirl. Now, I, who knows? Hard to imagine it could have been worse than some of what we did get, but it failed because we never saw it. Which left me with two kind of like, I don't know what to do with these. So Black Widow is one. Obviously, the box office was very skewed by the, the whole release strategy, by COVID. It was re generally positively reviewed. I don't particularly like it. I was negative on it at the time. I've gone back and rewatched it. I still Is this, this again? Black Widow. Okay. I still don't really like it. Um, I think the stakes are wrong. I think Taskmaster is terrible. And I feel cheated out of the last great Natasha action scene, which I feel like I'm still owed. Yeah, so I got I, you. But what is it? It's in the middle. It's not a, I can't call it a failure. I guess I like her. I like her as Black Widow. I agree. And I like Florence Pugh, which yes. is kind of why I feel cheated yes. in that movie. That like, yes. I feel like I should have gotten more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I can't call it a failure. The other one, which I'm going to float, and I want your take on it. What do you consider Wakanda Forever? Do you consider it a female-led superhero movie because... because certainly. Fury certainly. Is certainly. Certainly. So if you do, then it's probably a success. But it's only based off of the mystique of the first. And the death of Chadwick Boseman. So it's kind of hard to see, like, is how much of the success is the franchise momentum that was already built up versus who they positioned as Black Panther. That, like, was, a, that, that was a more curiosity-based movie. So that's why I don't really count that as an unqualified success either. So I really only count Wonder Woman 1. Yeah. Critical and commercial and stood alone and on its own merit was considered a success on all fronts. One, I think it's that. I couldn't think of anything else. I couldn't think of anything else. And there's a lot of really bad failures in there. I mean, did I, I can't remember if I mentioned Halle Berry's Catwoman, but like that, uh. <laughs> there, there's a, when they fail, these oh fail spectacularly. <laughs> so, I just bring you this list to be like, we're high on the Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. Yes. But if you were laying odds in Vegas on this movie being a big hit, mm. plus a thousand, plus fifteen hundred, the odds would be long. I bet I, 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 that's a good bet right there. And I would take the bet. Yes. But I'm just saying the history is against us here. Certainly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Red Sonia, all of them joints. I mean, you know, I kind of like Red Sonia probably for other reasons. But anyway. We're going to get another test of it this year with Furiosa. Now, that's not a superhero movie. Ah, that's yes, yes, a yes. Successful. But it's a female-led. Uh, but I think it's the perfect 
test case because everyone loved Charlize as the sidekick character, as the 1A to Tom Hardy in Fury Road. And now you're going to recast that to Anya Taylor-Joy, make her, move her to the center as the lead of her film. How will people respond to that? that I think it's actually a very good test of what we're talking about here. Yeah. And I'll put the question out to you, so let's just start talking about it, which is why? Why has it been so hard to get a female-led superhero comic book adaptation type project that is both lauded by critics and well-received enough by audiences to be considered a, a hit, a blockbuster hit? I think it has to do with two things, believability and certainly the performance of the actress, right? So is 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 the believability the believability like Catherine Ann Moss in The Matrix, you believe that's why everybody loved her. You believe that she was capable of all the things she was she was, she was dope. But it's that the believability and the performance of that actress um doing this these action sequences. That's why I love Black Widow's Carla Johansson. She 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 looked amazing. She looked like even though she's small, she looked like she was capable of all those things. She, she made it look good. So I'll, I'll, I'll leverage the, I'll take this in the direction you just took it. I don't think any, I think if we went and polled, you know, thousands of people about the matrix, I think Carrie Ann Moss would probably have a 99.9% .9 approval rating for her performance and her action, you know, physicality. But the question is, if I spun off Carrie Ann Moss into her own matrix film, would it have worked? And I think that's a slightly different question because that's a little bit what we're seeing, right? It's like these characters have had a tough time, even if they're somehow introduced in another project and well-received, right? Like most people think Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn is a pretty good portrayal of the character, but that character didn't latch on with the broader audience when it was made the lead of its own project. Yeah. So I think you're right. I think believability, physicality, carrying the role, that's part of it. I, that's that's like, I look, but, that, but, but, but just to make this example, it's like me, I, I had to stop watching Cobra Kai because I just can't believe why Macho can beat me. <laughs> I'm fighting him every day. Yo, if I see him, we fight him until I beat you because I just don't believe you can beat me. So yeah, is that is that that and but I've seen certain roles where women were like dope. I mean, I like so those what what one movie Brian reminds me what I know it's tough probably to think about it, but what movie is of a, a, a female led um not even superhero, but female led character that 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 had to go and, and do some business. So it's interesting, like I'll use Charlize as an example because she's done this a few times in her career. So I mentioned Furiosa, she was kind of riding shotgun for Tom Hardy. I think the old guard is excellent and I think she's excellent in it as a lead. However, Charlize also did, if you remember, back in like 2004, 2005, she did a movie like Aeon Flux, which was kind yeah, of like yeah. the female version of Equilibrium and wow. nobody liked that. Failed <laughs> <Aeon> massively. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very hit or miss, even when you've got clearly an actress who is capable of doing it. Now, one thing that stood out to me when I looked at this list, the writing in a lot of these is terrible. Like, they have had a tough time making a story around these characters and these actresses that really works. Like, think of, like, you know, like, Electra was introduced in a bad Daredevil movie, and then they stupidly spun her out. Jennifer yeah, Garner, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Ch no chance. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, that yeah, was yeah. dead on arrival. You know, Madam Webb, same thing. Like, whatever you think of the actresses, who, some of whom are, have some talent, have done some things, that movie never had a chance. I'm going to give you a Marcus Aurelius look. Kill Bill. Okay. So... But you're making my point because Quentin Tarantino will be on most people's top five list of greatest screenwriters of the modern era. That story. Right? That story out of work you're too, right. yeah. So that, okay, so okay, so if you consider, that's interesting. So if you extend this to action, something like that would be considered a massive success. Um, 
I remember yeah. always just thinking about it too while we were talking. I know, but what about Kim Bill? I was waiting for y'all. So there you go. <laughs> you know, and like, obviously I made the point, like Ocean's 8 actually outbox, outboxed all the Ocean's 11, 12, and 13. Statistically, Ocean's 8 made more money, right? So there, there clearly have been, and that's not an action franchise, but yeah. you know, it's, a, it's clearly a female-led project at every turn that worked and that people generally like. Ghostbusters. <laughs> <They're crazy. laughs> I can't believe I sat in the theaters to watch this. Oh my yeah, goodness! But, but but see, some of these also there's a difference between taking an established character and changing the gender of that character versus building something original, right? Like no yeah, one, yeah, no yeah, one yeah, yeah, yeah. says that Wonder Woman should be a man, right? Like Wonder Woman's always been a woman, so then it's just Gal Gadot brings the character to life. We like the portrayal. The movie's good enough. I agree with you. The third act is problematic, but there's you know there's scenes in that that are very memorable. I do think the third rail topic is the politicization of the project. People's perception, I think now, of this is the Iger moment, right? Is this a messaging movie or is this a movie movie? I think that does matter. And I think that will be very interesting to see in Supergirl where you have a, a base comic to draw from. What is the feel of that pairing on screen? Like, are you just feeling like you're in a grand old adventure that just happens to have two female leads? Or is there going to be a sense on the audience's part of the P word that th there's, there's some agendas and pandering and things of that nature going on here and that this is a vehicle for something else? No, I... It is, I, I don't think that works. I think like the Marvels got put into that bucket. This new Ray movie's clearly already in that bucket. Yeah, like I, th those projects. Which was the voice you mentioned? The Marvels, I think, was. Ah, yeah, 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 the things, although I've never watched these two shows, but one of the shows I did watch back in the day was Bionic Woman. I loved Bionic Woman back in the day. <laughs> I like Charlie's Angels. Ha, ha, if I had the opportunities, I would redo something like Charlie's Angels. Um, not, not the... Uh... But see, that's a perfect example of something aging through time and the project DNA changing, right? So you're talking about the TV show. Yeah which people still hold in high regard. McGee's film adaptation made a lot of money. It's actually, it's a pretty, the first one is actually pretty profitable. If you go back, I think people forget how big of a hit that was with Drew Barrymore and Lucy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the, the remake was reviled. Yeah. <laughs> reviled. And to the point where like, I think I saw Kristen Stewart recently was kind of just saying like, we had no idea what this was or what was going on and I hated everything about it. Yeah. Let me ask you, Brian, did you, and these are the two shows I didn't watch, but people liked it. I don't know why. I, I, don't, I don't know why, not because I, did, I thought it was whack, but I don't know why, because I, I don't know what was the, I never watched it. But Alias? Yep. And was it Angel or Dark Angel? Oh, yes. The Je Jessica Alba. You're, yes, James, yes, yes. Did you James ever watch those? Cameron produced. Je uh, I watched a little of Alias. I never watched the um, Jessica Alba show. Dark Angel, I think it was called. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I mean, and then, but here we go. Believability. Sigourney Weaver, Alien. You know what I'm saying? So there, there are examples of what, I guess there is a sort of, I don't know, but again, I have to use the word believability just to sort of generalize it and not be specific about it. But um, I got to believe that. Yeah. This person so, can do it. So this is a great point, but look at the people who made Alien and Aliens, right? You have Ridley Scott, prime Ridley Scott, and a young James Cameron building a story. That and story. Let, let's not forget there you go. James Cameron from the mind of James Cameron, Sarah Connor as well, right? So this yes. is a guy who clearly understood how to make a heroine on screen. And so that's is what I mean. Like when it's in the hands of the masters, there hasn't yeah. been a problem, but they don't, they haven't come in to do this kind of movie. And so we don't know who's in the director's chair for Supergirl, which may be the ultimate determinant of whether this succeeds or fails. 
But I think what you're also talking about is like somebody like Sigourney Weaver on screen struck, you know, she was nominated for an Oscar and deservedly so for Ripley in the second movie, not the first, the second. You know, she obviously struck a huge blow for the cause of sort of women in a lead role, women in an action role um, in that type of movie because you hadn't really seen much of that before. But I don't think when you go back and watch Aliens, you feel like James Cameron is leading with, hey, look over here. You know what I mean? Like he's not leading with that agenda. He's just shooting a great movie. And Sigourney's a great lead and it works. And I feel like if Supergirl channels that, I think it, then I think we're in business. Like, and then I think you might have a chance for a Wonder Woman type outcome. Um, but if it's like, as I said, if people feel like they're being hit over the head with it being Supergirl versus Superman, especially when Superman Legacies just happened, I, I don't know. I'm hopeful, but I still high on it. But it's just, I was, I it just got, I just kind of went down the rabbit hole of trying to figure yeah. out like, how can this be successful? And like, you know, what, what would make it a big hit or what would cause it to fail? Like so many of these other projects have failed. Let me ask you this last question before we wrap this one up, because we at the 21 minute mark. But this, I think this is an interesting question, Ryan. Given all we've said about the track record of uh, female-led uh, superhero films, uh, female-led action sort of films, and we don't want that track, and I'm pretty sure James Gunn doesn't want that track record to continue. Do you think either he directs or he hires a female director to direct? What do you What do you think he does? Great question. And I think the answer is he's going to direct it. I, I thought this in the back of my mind, but the way he's talking about this project, and I know exactly what you're saying because you've seen that. And like, people are going to feel both ways about it. There are people who are going to be mad if, if a Supergirl movie is not directed by a woman. But um, why, right? But I think... I never understood that, Brian. But that's that's like if I'm that's like if I'm making, making an it. Ewok movie, I'm gonna hire Peter Dinklage. <laughs> I'm not touching that. I'm not touching but you know, but you know what I'm saying, Dave? I know what you're saying. I know it's what you're like saying. no, no disrespect. I love him as an actor. I, I wish I could see. I wish he would do be doing more. But that's like you know, it's like I got whatever. Well, I mean, we just use the example of you know James Cameron who. <laughs> You can read about James Cameron's personal life all you want. He's been married five times. Yeah, but when it yeah, comes yeah, to female yeah. Characters. I, I, I don't have a problem with what he's given us in cinematic history, you know. But I, yeah. So I just think the way Gunn is talking, and if he's that high on the project and he's working yeah. that closely with Tom King, it's gonna be him. I think it is. I think after he yeah. does Superman Legacy, he's gonna be so immersed in the world. He's gonna say, "I want that." I want Woman of Tomorrow. And I actually think that might give the project a better chance. Um, but yes, the idea that, look, you're going to have, you know, Tom King's male and James Gunn's a male, and they're going to be the ones behind this making Supergirl. Yeah, there's going to be people feel the other way about that. And I should say, look, look, the, the one that's not an action movie at all, but it, we're having this in the year. We're having this a year after Barbie, right? Which was the single biggest box office phenomenon of 2023. Is very politicized. Has messaging all over it. Is directed by you know one of the filmmaking prodigies of our time in, in Greta Gerwig. So there's no one shoe, one size fits all for this. But Barbie's also not a superhero, even if you're in sort of this fantastical land. We are talking about a unique, there's a different challenge when you have to do what Carrie Ann Moss did, when you have to do what Sigourney Weaver did, and you have to make people believe you're, you're strong enough, powerful enough, skilled enough, smart enough. There is a different challenge to that, male and female, quite honestly. We had the same issue with the male actors who can't pull off the physicality of the roles they're asked to do. But, but you're on it. I think Gunn directs this. And I think whenever that next update is that David Zasloff is teasing, I think James Gunn will announce he's gonna direct the movie. Let us know in the conversation below what you guys think. And let us know if there's a movie out there that was female-led that you guys enjoyed. I know some of y'all going to... Action, yeah. sci-fi, superhero. That. And not Red Sonya. Not no. Red Sonya. <laughs> no. 
um, but yeah, let us know in the comment section which which. I mean, somebody obviously somebody I was gonna say a uh, Wonder Woman, um, but what else outside of Wonder Woman? What else? What else? Because yeah, Kill Bill. Besides the ones we have mentioned, I want to know the besides the ones we have mentioned. Let us know in the comment section below uh, what you guys think. And if James gonna is he gonna call his number yet again, which I thought he was gonna do for Superman, and nobody believed me. But there we go. Is he gonna take the 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 the, the baton for this uh, Supergirl uh, movie? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Jam Report. The show goes on. Yeah!